In this discrete mathematics video, we will prove the following theorem. Let m be a positive integer, and let a, b, and c be integers. Show that if a is congruent to b modulo m, then a minus c is congruent to b minus c modulo m. We will start with a brief recap just to go over what we already know about modular arithmetic. We will then dive straight into the proof and end the video with a brief exploration of these ideas in a wider context. So let's get started. To begin, remember the division algorithm, which is no algorithm because it does not take input and give output, but you know, we call it that. So the division algorithm right here. It is composed of four elements. A, which is the dividend. D, which is the divisor. Q, the quotient. And R, the remainder. In a way, it is a way of writing that D divides A, given that there could be a remainder. So not saying that D necessarily divides A evenly. If it was, of course, R would equal zero, but that doesn't have to be the case. Now, typically in this situation, we are most concerned with either the quotient or the remainder. So those get their own unique functions. For the quotient, we have A divides D or A div D, A divided by D, which gives us the quotient regardless of what the remainder is. And then A modulo D or A mod D, which gives us the remainder regardless of what the quotient is. Now, if we were to let our remainder, r, equal the remainder of two different integers, a and b, or a mod m for a, and b mod m for b, then those two integers, a and b, would be congruent modulo m. Now, a and b could be identical, but that's not necessary here. All that is necessary is that the remainders, when divided by m, are equal. And the new notation that mod takes in this situation is that a is congruent to b mod m. It's no longer the function it was before, but just states that these two have the same remainder when divided by m. Now, for a formal definition of this, we say that if m divides a minus b, meaning no remainder, but m divides a minus b, then a is congruent to b modulo m. Now you will recall that we are trying to prove a is congruent to b modulo m implies a minus c is congruent to b minus c modulo m. And you may want to start with the definition here and try and prove it straight from the source, but there are some problems with this. First off, if we were to subtract c from both sides to try and maintain this, there's no way to, to um, prove that the truth values of this implication would be maintained. So we can't do that. Also, while implication is transitive, meaning I can go from A to B to C and say that A also implies C, it is not symmetric. So I can't take this the other direction. And if you look at our original proof, we're trying to start here. The hypothesis is our consequent in the definition. So we'll need to do something else. Luckily, there's a theorem that follows directly from the definition that will help us prove this. It is theorem four. Theorem four states that if A is congruent to B modulo M, if and only if there exists some integer K such that A equals B plus K M. And so with this, we can start with our hypothesis a is congruent to b mod m, which we are assuming is true because it's the hypothesis of the situation. Using theorem four, we can go from this to a equals b plus km, assuming there exists some integer k of this equality here. And because this is an equality, we can easily subtract c from both sides. And then, you know, grouping the correct terms together with our associative and commutative laws, we end up with a minus c equals b minus c plus km. While theorem 4 is so useful is it has an if and only if, which is a symmetric logical relation. And because of that, we can walk it straight back to where we came from. And now only a is replaced with a minus c and b is replaced with b minus c. So what we end up with is a minus c 
is congruent to B minus C modulo M. What do these ideas really mean? Well, the interesting thing about modular arithmetic is that, in a way, we are imposing a new number line on top of the original number line. This may not be the proper mathematical way of saying it, but in a way, it's true. And if we let m equal 6, a equal 4, and b equal 10, and then also c equal 3, we will end up with a statement that is true because 4 and 10 are congruent modulo 6. And what this means is, if we were to draw a new number line and divide all of these integers down here by 6 and only worry about the remainder, the new and improved, maybe not improved, but the new number line would look something like this, where 4 modulo 6 has a remainder of 4 right here, and then 10 modulo 6 also, you will see, has a remainder of 4. And if we take 4 minus 3, well, of course, we get 1 right here. And you will see that mod 1 modulo 6 is, of course, 1. But then 10 minus 3 gives us 10, 7 right here, which also is modulo 1. So either way you look at it, you can either move the original number line 3, uh, 3 back, and get to 7 and then figure out what that is modulo 6 or you can just go to our new number line and go back 3 and get to the 1 right here or in 4 get to the 1 right here and that really is what people talk about with modular arithmetic or also known as clock arithmetic another way to look at this is to draw yourself a clock with if it's modulo 6 6 points on it and as you can see if we were to start at the 4 and subtract the 3, we would go right back around the clock to the 1 value. And then, as well, if we were to add 1 from the 1 value, it would go to 2. And this is the same thing we would get if we had an infinite number line spiraling around this over and over and over again. But we don't need an infinite number line because the modular number line, if you want to call it that, for any integer value itself repeats is really in a way what this theorem is saying when you look at it in kind of a different way i hope you enjoyed this video on the proof of a modular arithmetic theorem have a wonderful day